2019 was a rip-roaring year in the stock market? Should we expect the same in 2020? Or is there change in the wind? Hello, I'm Bruce Frazier. Welcome to Power Charting. Happy New Year. So let's uh, start the new year off with a market study, an integration exercise using the Wyckoff method and other ancillary tools to draw some conclusions about how the year 2020 might start. The present position of the market indexes is, is our subject for today. We're going to look at point and figure count objectives. We're gonna look at sentiment, the monetary backdrop, long-term price structures, and then ask the question, is the trend of price climaxing and it, should we be watching for a change of character in price? So with that in mind, let's get started. We can see here uh, from this chart, which you have probably seen before, which was published a year ago, that a cause was built. We always in Wyckoff look for a cause of accumulation, distribution, reaccumulation, redistribution. We look for a cause that's countable on a point and figure chart to precede an important move, an important trend. And so here we saw that at the beginning of 2019, when the markets were in the depths of this big downtrend, oversold, that a cause was built and this cause produced a count across this 22,669 level. It produced a count up to 28,313,29,254. A really big count in a very short period of time as a V bottom was being formed. So we published this at the time. Well, as of the end of the year, we had a peak that was made at 28,872, which was right in the middle of this uh, range of objectives that was uh, developed back at the beginning of the year. So as the year began, the market went into an important uptrend and this uptrend went on right to the end of the year and put in this count objective almost on the anniversary date of the beginning of the uh, bull run. Okay, so let's look at this a little differently. Here is a vertical bar chart. And this yellow box down here is the area that we took this count from. And we put it on the vertical chart. And you can see here's the count that we just discussed. We're right in the middle of that area now you can see that the uh, 28,868 level was attained here. And there is an important reaccumulation area that formed in August. So we're going to take a minute and look at that count also. That count takes us up, and I'll show you the PNF in a minute. 29,509, 30,177, you can see that the 29,509 number is very close to the extreme count here, 29,254. So we would call this a confirming count. So the reaccumulation count is confirming the accumulation count at the beginning of the move. And so this low was made on Christmas Eve 2018, and we can see that it has gone right up to the uh, anniversary date in the end of 2019. So drawing a trend channel, we can see that using the classic uh, traditional form of trend analysis, the Wyckoff method, where we take two adjacent lows and we draw a trend line across those, we can see that this trend line has gone up, has been touched again in early October as a very important swing trading rally had developed. And then this rally carried the 
in this case, the Dow Industrials right up to the overbought line, which is this dotted line. And here we are at uh, the end of the year going up on, in a rather dramatic fashion up into the overbought condition as defined by this trend channel. And so we fulfilled point and figure count objectives. We've had a confirming count. We've had a phenomenal epic 2019 uptrend. Now we're overbought at the top of the channel and point and figure objectives have nearly been fulfilled. You could argue that they have been fulfilled actually. So with this in mind, the fuel tank is almost empty. We're at the top of a uh, ch channel, which is an overbought condition. What should we expect next? Here is the point and figure count that was the reaccumulation count that came in August of 2019. And this count you can see across here is a count that produced this objective that could possibly get us over 30,000 here in the not too distant future. And then I actually added this additional count, larger count, more speculative, which takes us up, I just put the conservative count, 31,668. So there's actually a, a larger count available and uh, we'll uh, call that a speculative count at this time. So now here's another interesting development. As we have come into the end of the year, now this is intraday. You know how I love to do intraday point and figure. This is five minute data. So very short term data, three box reversal method, uh, ATR scaling. And so there is a reaccumulation on a very minor scale that formed in the end of this accelerating uptrend. And what I'd like to point out, because we might look at this and say, oh, this is distribution. Well, what would uh, diminish the likelihood that this is distribution is look at the volume. We have volatility coming in as we're going through this sideways action, but notice how on the declining uh, columns, as we can see with the, the red here, look at how low the volume is. The volume is quite low which shows that no supply is coming in as volatility is developing, which leads us to think, ah, this is reaccumulation, not redistribution. This is not out of its range yet. You can see it's just right there. But this small reaccumulation has given us a count uh, in the area of the count line of 28,531 has given us a count to 29,317, 29,425 on this more conservative 11 column count. And that is a, another reaccumulation confirming count, similar uh, in its objective to the one we looked at from August. And so then we also, if we extend our count out to this larger area, which is the breakdown to the slow, which produces an up thrust, but then back into the range again. This takes us 29,777 to almost 30,000, 29,912. And so there is evidence here that suggests that the market might just continue to accelerate up into this 29 area, 29,000 area. Uh, before this uptrend is done. Let's take a minute and talk about interest rates because 2019 was a very important year for uh, the interest rate environment because of what happened prior to that. Notice here, this is the two-year note and the two-year note going back to late 2016, the data here, but look what happened. <clears throat> the Fed had become had come into a tightening posture during uh, late 2017 in the fourth quarter. And you can see that the Fed became, uh, in their tightening posture, had, had the effect of causing interest rates to go up. 
for both the two-year yield and the 10-year yield. This created a lot of stress in the financial markets and actually uh, produced a uh, bear phase for bonds. And also we recall that in October of 2018, the stock market just went into a big decline in, right into the end of the year, which produced the V bottom that we just studied. So here we can see that this uh, rising interest rate environment was uh, uh, quite difficult for the financial markets. And also notice this line up here is the yield curve line. Well, the yield curve was flattening all the way through there and flattening yield curve is a sign of a tightening environment by uh, the Federal Reserve. Well, now we have a, a sideways uh, yield curve situation and we had literally only one week where the yield curve went uh, inverted. But here's the part that is so important to us is look at the decline in interest rates as the Fed became accommodative in 20, late 2018 and through 2019. And this is the high powered money that came in to the markets, which helped to propel the big upward move in the stock market in 2019. So there was a very easy money environment, a lot of liquidity being put into the system, Part of this is related to the fact that 2020 is an election year. So the Fed, any policy moves they're going to make, they want to make those prior to an election year because they don't want to appear to be political in the uh, election year itself. So if they're going to pursue an easy money policy, they really have to do that work in 2019. And honestly, one of the jobs of the Fed is to help the incumbent administration get reelected. And so they are pushing uh, liquidity into the system, which immediately goes into the financial markets. And then with the lag starts to work its way into the real economy. And this is part of our discussion for 2020 is that the liquidity and the lower interest rates that occurred in 2019 is going to, to uh, create a condition in 2020 where you're gonna have uh, a stronger economy, you're gonna have a GDP growing, uh, further tightening of the employment market, rising wages as a result of a tight labor market, and also investment in capital equipment that is an inventory and growth by businesses to, that they're going to want to prepare for improving economic conditions in 2020. And so this is the thing that businesses are gonna be looking forward to and trying to plan for. And so uh, now we would expect the Fed to become uh, uh, neutral and get out of the way and let the politics uh, go where they're gonna go as 2020 unfolds. But this is a good environment for the economy. This is gonna be a good environment for, um, potentially a good environment for financial markets. And we're gonna talk more about that in a minute because that's what we really care about is how the financial markets are behaving relative to the economy. So these are yearly bars going back to 1925 this uh, shows that we've had an epic bull run that started in 2009 at the end of the Great Recession. And then look at this last bar. This is through December 31st of this year, of 2019. And look at the sheer magnitude of this bar. And we know that the bar opened on the low of the year and closed effectively on the high. And so we have this big uptrend. We just looked at how the year uh, unfolded. Let's go back and just look at that for a minute. So here's the year. You can see that there were some ups and downs along the way, but this is the year 2019 that had just such a uh, incredible run upward 
and with good point and figure count, good trend channel development, and so on. And so we can see that this is what the year looked like, but it opened on the lows and closed on the highs. And so uh, going back, uh, this is arithmetic scale and it's why it looks so crazy. So you can see each one of these years all the way up in this really uh, epic bull run have been uh, pretty strong with the most recent year being the strongest. And so can we ask the question, is uh, the bull market accelerating or is this a climax that will stop the advance? So uh, we will try to answer that question as we go along here but only if I can keep track of the time. So this silly chart, arithmetic scale, which I know you're all going, well, you don't draw a long-term chart arithmetically because, it, uh, because of how the chart is so compressed at the lows. Well, here's the logarithmic scale. And this is how uh, classically we would take a chart and draw it. Here's 1925. And here's the uh, 29 crash, the 32 low the uh, Great Depression. And this is the uh, a trend channel that I've drawn using the principles of Wyckoff, where I've drawn it on two adjacent low points, in this case, the 42 low, which was in the depths of World War II, truly a time when there was serious doubt about the ability to be able to prevail and uh, come out uh, on top of uh, World War II, so a very dark time for the world. And here's the 1974 low, which ironically is in the aftermath of the resignation of Richard Nixon uh, after he was sure to be impeached in, uh, pr uh, prior to that. So here is the low that followed uh, Nixon's uh, resignation. And so here is the 42 low, and it draws this big upward channel in the low of the Great Recession in 2009. You can see it came, became very close to touching the demand line of this trend channel. And what we've done is we've drawn a parallel line, which we call an overbought line. And we take it off this high point here. And you can see how well this overbought line has contained this, the trading of the uh, bull market. And here in, and this is the S&P, and here you can see that in the uh, dot-com bubble, that there is a throw over of the channel for uh, all of five bars. And so it just so happens those five bars are five years. And this is a wickedly bad uh, bear market especially for the NASDAQ, the dot-com stocks. But there's an attempt to come out of the channel and then it comes back in pretty quickly. And then it adheres to this channel for, this is the uh, bull market of the first decade of the century, uh, 2000 to 2010, 2009. And you can see here that uh, the run-up in this bull market is uh, interrupted by the Great Recession. Then here is the epic bull market that we're in now. Well, look at what has happened. So we have here a run up and this chart was through December 31st of 2019. Look at the rally up to the overbought line. Well, the market has become exactly overbought on that line at the end of 2019. And so this is really interesting. I would make the case here that even if this market can get out of this channel, which I think it can, and we have talked about this in prior episodes, we've looked at long-term point and figure charts, and we've looked at uh, uh, price objectives that take the S&P much higher than this level. Now, does it have to go up to those levels? No, not at all. But this is really interesting because uh, this is an overbought condition, and I think this is going to represent resistance to advancing for some period of time. How long? I don't know. But you can see over here that these bars 
uh, all adhered to the overbought line before failure uh, of the end decline. Okay, so with that in mind, we have an overbought condition and some kind of likely resistance that for some period is likely to, to, uh, uh, to overcome or, or hold back the market. Now, this is just a schematic of a reaccumulation trading range. I want you just to keep this in mind because we're gonna talk about the area that's in uh, pink here uh, as we uh, unfold the idea of what's gonna come next. So uh, we'll come back to this, but we have, as we come, as we've come into this uh, rising trend, we have a point and figure count that's been fulfilled. We're at the top of a channel. We're at the top of a channel, a very long-term yearly channel and a daily channel. So we looked at both of those. Uh, the market has been somewhat climactic in the year end. Now let's talk about sentiment. And uh, well, we'll look at that in a minute, but I wanna show you this uh, chart, which you may have seen this in the past. I showed it once before in an earlier episode, but I wanna add to this with some additional thinking uh, this is a 116 year span of data, but it's every fourth year. And this is the US presidential election years going back 116 years. And they're all added together, summed up day by day through the year and summed up and then uh, indexed to 100. And it shows the uh, the trend, the average trend of uh, index prices uh, throughout the course of the election year. So let's say that this is 2020, that this is an average. Now we know that the year is not gonna turn out just like this, but it could have a family resemblance. So let's keep that in mind because we know that in this case, there's been a, an important rally in 2019 up into the end of the year. We are now in the new year. We do have higher point figure counts, which could drive the market up higher. We saw into the mid 29,250 to 500 area for the Dow Jones. And so we can see here that we uh, could be in the throes of a buying climax because we've used up all the fuel in the tank of our point and figure analysis. And so the thing that would happen after a buying climax is an automatic reaction. And an automatic reaction is a big bout of supply coming in, selling on volume, which stops the advance. So when we get that, we draw resistance above buying climax extremes below the automatic reaction low and then we watch for a trading range which can either be reaccumulation for another move up or distribution for another move down well in fact we recall that the fed has been quite accommodative has put a lot of liquidity into the system and interest rates are quite low and so this is all a backdrop that tends to help support the economy and the stock market. So here we can see here that we have a classic Wyckoff structure of reaccumulation that we can draw on this schematic, the seasonal average of the election year. And we can see that the first half of the year is a trading range. And this trading range, what it does in Wyckoffian terms is it allows us to consider the possibility that this is fuel being put back in the tank as stock goes from speculative hands, which tend to be weaker, into strong hands of the composite operator types, and that they will accumulate shares throughout this six month period because the tendency in the presidential election year is for in the second half of the year to have a really important rally that takes the market, in this case, we would argue, to new high prices. And so this yellow area represents an, an example of where a point and figure count could be taken 
that gives us a very large six month count for an important move higher, which would then take us out of the above the overbought condition on the trend channel we saw on those yearly bars. And so we need to build cause or count for another move up. So looking at this, uh, we see a, an important trend that comes into the end of the year, but the first half of the year is spent going sideways, which requires us to consider uh, tactics for how to manage a trading range for some period of time. And this trading range also uh, respects that resistance area that we saw on those, the yearly bars of that very long-term chart that went up and touched the overbought line. So it gives the market six months to rest at that level before a new uptrend can unfold. So, and then uh, in uh, a summary of this, sorry, 2019 rally needs a rest. We can see that it's uh, used up its fuel. We're gonna look at sentiment in a minute briefly, which is gonna show that the sentiments become quite bullish or extreme also. A new cause needs to be formed. And we can see that in this uh, uh, seasonal chart, the ability for that to uh, develop. And so this would be a reaccumulation type structure. Stock returns in these structures, trading ranges to strong hands, and then the uptrend resumes. So here we can see this reaccumulation chart again. We're looking for a buying climax, an automatic reaction, resistance and support to develop, and then a period of time of recharging the batteries for the next bullish uptrend in the market. Now, lastly, in the little bit of time that we have less left, let's look at sentiment. So this is uh, uh, thanks to Pring Turner. And the last chart, the seasonal chart, is thanks to uh, Season Axe with permission. Uh, they have uh, allowed me to use this chart. I appreciate it very much. And Dimitri Speck uh, is the uh, great analyst at Season Axe. So here we can see that at the beginning of 2019, December 21st, the extreme, the, the fear and greed index was all the way down at three. If you wanna see the components of this index, search for CNN fear and greed index in Google and you'll find it and see the components. All the way to three, just can't get any lower than that. And by the end of 2019, the fear and greed index had reached 91. And so that was on the one year anniversary of the low, December 24th, 2019. And uh, when I checked it at the beginning of 2020, on the second, I believe it was, it was at 94. It just doesn't get any higher than that. And then also just to conclude, put call numbers are extremely high, showing a lot of call buying. And this call buying also is indicative of an extreme amount of um, uh, bullish sentiment also. Bearish sentiment would be when the put buying is high. You can see that comes around the lows and at around the highs, you have a lot of call buying. And uh, finally, this is from Bloomberg and uh, this is the amount of short interest in the SPY ETF and you can see that it's as low as it's been all the way back at the beginning of 2018 when the market had a pretty good reaction and formed a range bound condition. And with that, thank you so much for spending time with me. I'll see you next week. Have a great week.